Fox Pack has distinguished itself by going where no news organization has gone before, virtually no news. But in our number one story, what does it look like when even Fox Pack gets non-newsed and out-promoted? What happens when the crazy is too crazy for Fox? The happening is televangelist Glenn Beck. It was chronicled by Mark Leibovich for the New York Times Magazine, though he may not put it quite these terms. The scary scares advertisers and the lost advertising makes for a very troublesome relationship now between Beck and Fox. Quoting the article, as of September 21st, 296 advertisers have asked that their commercials not be shown on Beck's show, up from 26 in August 2009. Fox is also a difficult time selling ads on the O'Reilly Factor and Fox and Friends when Beck appears on those shows as a guest. Beck's show is known in the TV sales world as empty calories, meaning he draws great ratings, but is toxic for ad sales. But Beck has no problem using his Fox Pack TV show as a platform to make more money for himself, as he endlessly plugs his multimedia, multi-personality stuff. And while Fox Pack president Roger Ailes is described as generally supportive of Beck, the Beckian self-promotion appears to be becoming a problem. The cross-promotion can be a sore spot at Fox News, particularly for its president, Roger Ailes, who has complained about Beck's hawking his non-Fox ventures too much on his Fox show. Ailes has communicated this to Beck himself and through intermediaries. There's also the matter of egos, with Ailes sensing a lack of gratitude for his star-making ability. He, Ailes, has also been vocal around the network about how Beck does not fully appreciate the degree to which Fox News has made him the sensation he's become in recent months. In the days following Beck's Lincoln Memorial Rally, which by Beck's estimate drew a half million people, <laughs> Ailes told associates that if Beck were still at headline news, there would have been 30 people on the mall. Of course, Beck's stream of consciousness broadcasts have occasionally gotten our attention for their sheer lunacy, as well as Beck's potential to actually lead some of the lunatics. But when Fox News complains about one of its own, you know there's something terribly wrong. Several Fox News journalists, the article continues, have complained that Beck's antics are embarrassing Fox, that his inflammatory rhetoric makes it difficult for the network to present itself as a legitimate news outlet. Like they didn't have that problem already. Let's bring in the senior correspondent for American Prospect Magazine, co-author of Free Ride, Paul Waldman. Paul, good evening. Hi, Keith. Uh, the gist of this is in the Times that Glenn Beck is the universal solvent. He's great at first, and then you realize you don't have anything in which to keep him because he eats through everything. Well, the thing to understand about Glenn Beck is that he actually does offer something pretty compelling to his viewers. You know, what he says that is that the end is near, disaster is upon us, and if you watch me, I will reveal the truth to you, and you will be one of the few people who understand, you know, what the sinister levers of power are and the, the deep conspiracy behind everything that's going on. Now, as long as you don't step back and realize that uh, what he's saying is completely insane, uh, it's actually a very compelling message, and a lot mm -hmm. of people are drawn to it. Yeah, but, you know, that's the follow me to freedom thing. My, my pal Charlie Steiner did that in an ESPN commercial, and we all laughed, and everybody laughed 10, 12 years later. This is not obviously done humorously. And also, in the context of what we're talking about here, in many senses, it would seem that Beck is, is sort of the, the quintessence of Fox News. He likes to tell stories. He doesn't get bogged down with actual facts, and he can self-promote like nobody's business. What would the problem be between him and Fox? Well, you know, when it gets to a certain level of extremism, it can become dangerous for them. You know, when uh, he lost all those advertisers when he came out and said that Barack Obama had a deep-seated hatred of white people. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, according to Leibovich's article, uh, there seems to be concern, some concern at Fox that, they're, that he's more concerned with uh, the Glenn Beck brand than the Fox News brand. You know, he takes in about $35 million a year, only a small portion of which is his Fox salary. He's got the radio show and the books and the live performances, uh, so he's really a one man industry. And don't forget that that didn't just happen organically. That was a push to a great degree by the fellow on uh, Twitter, Stop Beck, uh, who's done such a marvelous job on this. But is there, do you think, an analogy to be made here that the, the, the GOP let in the Tea Party vampire and look what happened over there. Now that's the Tea Party that has kind of a Republican house that it lives in. And Fox News, uh, you know, let in Glenn Beck, figuring he'd sort of fit in amongst the rest of the craziness. And now it's Glenn Beck with the, his backup group, the Fox, uh, Fox uh, News Network. Yeah, I think that that's true, that in many ways he's sort of the, the perfect man for the rights moment. You know, every time there's been a Democratic president in the last half century or so, we've seen these right-wing populist movements that are consumed with conspiracy theories come up. When Bill Clinton was president, you had the militias talking about black helicopters. Uh, in the 1960s, you had the John Birch Society screaming about the Illuminati. And so when Beck is up there with his chalkboards and the circles and arrows, um, it touches a real nerve. Um, but uh, the, there's, there are some questions about 
about whether or not that has a lasting negative effect on Fox's brand. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, how do you get out of it if it suddenly does? And he's still, although his ratings are down, and then obviously the, the the advertising thing is the ultimate question, not the ratings, but the advertising thing. How does Fox get out of it if they need to get out of it? Well, uh, I guess they can they can think about whether or not they want to renew his contract when it comes up next time. Um, but you know, the nature of those sorts of movements is is that they dissipate after a while. And with Beck's show, you know, as I said before, it's very compelling. But there's only so long you can kind of sit there on the edge of your seat, grinding your teeth thinking that, that the walls are all falling down and Armageddon is around the corner. After a while, when you know, the, the person you're watching keeps saying it's happening tomorrow, it's happening tomorrow, and Armageddon doesn't come, eventually people sort of start to drift away, and that may end up happening to him, or maybe it is already. Yeah, well, but they're the guys, who, I mean, the, the people who forecast the end of the world and, and, and said, no, I got, it, I got it wrong. The new end of the world is, uh, is three years from now. They stay in business, so perhaps, perhaps not. Um, and he could always, I don't know, get a job somewhere else, I suppose. Paul Waldman of the American Prospect. Great. Thanks for your time, Paul. Thank you, Keith.